Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Chaos Dwarfs are creeping ever near. Their announcement is sure to be quite explosive, but before we get there, we have a few more battle balance and bug fix battles to showcase, and there were some very good ones in a series with ODM Loopy. As I said, we'll be returning to vanilla gameplay very soon, but for this one, the Tomb Kings and the Skaven will commit violence in the Valley of Vultures. Grand Hierophant Katep, DJ Heezy K, will be doing his best Skrillex impression on his Roomba of Doom, the Casket of Souls, and he's a known quantity at this point. He can drop the sickest, fattest beats from downtown, Sandstorm, Curse Blades, Nero's Incantation of Protection, and Righteous Smiting are his spells. And the last one is the big one, because when you overcast it, not only are you getting a 40% increase to missile damage, you're also getting plus 40 reload skill, which means your slow firing artillery starts shooting like a machine gun. Perfect choice for clearing out the Vermintide on their approach and killing lots of infantry. Next to him is an incredible model and an eternal disappointment, the mighty Hyro Titan. Suffering from giant syndrome, a lack of missile resist, and poor speed that prevents it from getting on target. Can nevertheless make a large impact in the right situation, so we will all pray that Tall Geese puts out quite the show for us in this one, because it is such a cool looking unit. In the rear are Necro Knights, the spear variant, who love to be fed overcast cursed blades for that plus 16 bonus for large, but have much better base stats than their halberd brothers. Really effective backline sweeper, just another Tomb King's construct that's dripped out of their mind. Love the aesthetic of this faction. Two Nehakara Horsemen, two Chariots, two Shabti, and a Skeleton Horde. Might be able to figure out what's new about Realm of Souls at Tier 3, replacing the Ushabti Summit. Across the desert on the Skaven side, Thagaraki have a very well-constructed army, eclectic and balanced in all the right ways. Warlock Engineer in the Vanguard with the Doom Rocket, very similar to Kalita's magic missile actually, and plenty of slave and clan rats to be fed into the meat grinder and summoned by Lord Skrulk. Three Storm Vermin Sword and Board, and Eshin Triads defending the flanks. Alongside gangs of rat ogres, they are a potent anti-construct force, they can chunk their way through high armor units no problem. In the rear are two units of rattling guns, which are perhaps an even bigger danger to constructs, and they will need to be shut down quite quickly if the Tomb Kings want to keep their statues in the fight for long. A daddy disease in the center, he comes bearing gifts for all the bad little boys and girls on the Tomb King side. And the Storm Vermin will be a primo target for Katap and his casket. Relatively expensive, as far as Skaven Foot troops are concerned anyway. Tightly packed formation, tons of models, very juicy target for your boy. So, right from the start, Patra's Incantation of Righteous Smiting will put in that work. And as for the Pope of Pestilence himself, he wields the Rod of Corruption, the Liber Bubonicus, Pestilent Breath, and the Vermintide, so expect lots more bodies to join the Ratmen Chorus of Chittering. Now, there's one thing you should really think about emulating when playing as the Skaven. It's this combination of Eshin Triads and Rat Ogres working in tandem. Whoever's on the other side isn't- oh my god, what a disgusting shot from Katep. My lord, that Casket of Souls does a lot of damage. You buff that bad boy up with the power of Patra, enemy infantry just tends to explode. But it's a difficult combo to deal with. It has a ton of synergy with each other, those triads and rat ogres, good speed to maneuver on the flanks, and threaten the casket or constructs in the rear. Some artillery trading in these opening stages. Doom Rocket from the Warlock Engineer causing some carnage in and amongst these spooky scary skeletons. And Katep will single-handedly force the Skaven into high gear, which is one of his benefits. Can hopefully cause some panic and disorganization amongst their ranks, which leads to micro mistakes. 20 kills on that first Doom Rocket, gonna soften up the skeletons as the chariots make their move over on the other side. Big time charge into the Slave Rats, and chariots are really good for clearing out Skaven infantry, especially the low armor stuff. They will not perform well against the Storm Vermin, they don't have enough mass to push through that many bodies, that much armor, but against everything else, even the Triads actually, they could probably do some good damage on the charge, not that they would want to engage the weeping blades of those Eshin assassins. Tracer rounds from the Ratlings, slowing and suppressing, making it more difficult for the chariots to pull away, and the Sundered Armor will certainly not help either. Remember that the Eshin triads have only just now become visible, and these probing attacks from the Tomb Kings will probably have to be put on hold as their center is going to buckle pretty quick. They're going to need some support from the Ujabti, from the Hyro Titan, and from the Nehakara Horsemen. But of course, they can't just go in with the Hyro Titan in the center, because the Rattling Guns are there to support. Katap still firing, about to cast another Righteous Incantation of Patra's Smiting, and a Spirit Leech from the Hyro Titan hitting the Rat Ogres in the center. Skeletons are going to buckle quickly, 
after that assault. Skrulk's putting a lot of emphasis on breaking that center and getting at Katap. Sandstorm's yet another great tool that Katap has for breaking up the infantry in the center, and the rattling guns, look at how much damage they just dealt to that Hyro Titan in only their first volley. It's going to drop about 4,000 HP at the edge of their fire arc, and this is why bringing those large constructs against Skaven can be a risky proposition. They're not going to be able to kill it right now. The Hyro Titan will be able to escape from that situation, but dangerous. Make one little slip up, and your construct's losing half its HP in only a couple seconds. Shades of the Mummy, as the undead armies of Anubis and all those gigantic jackal demons charge forth for Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Similar vibes here as the Skaven and Tomb Kings clash. Ratman looking to weather the storm with their storm vermin holding a line for now, and they should be able to do so for a while anyway. Burushapti did receive some buffs in their both infantry department. More rattling gun focus fire coming in and shredding that Hyro Titan, and it is so slow when it is suppressed, down to like 27 speed. So had a difficult time getting out of the fire arc, even though he was already at the edge, and interesting developments from the Rat Ogres and from those Eshin Triads. As we said, they're gonna look to put pressure on the rear and they are around the flank and in closing this Tomb King's army. We have a lot of stuff in reserve right now, but can't really, or at least doesn't want to, just go right in to fight them. But the Necro Serpents will have to. Another absolutely disgusting shot from Katap after yet another Patra's incantation of Righteous Smiting Overcast. Necro Serpents getting a downhill charge into the Rat Ogres and showing their superiority in melee combat. They've got way better stats and they are going to need Jaff's Incantation of Cursed Blades for that plus 16 bonus for Slarge. But they're dealing with a lot of AP and Armor Sundering on the other side. Those Weeping Blades will cut their armor value in half and that is one of their biggest strengths in terms of their survivability. So that's going to be a really difficult fight for them. There's no way they get out of that without taking a lot of damage. Chariots and Nehekara Horsemen are going to move right up the center here. They realize the threat those rattling guns pose. They don't have enough time to go all the way around the flank. They have to go right up the gut and silence the Daka for good. Spirit Leech, the second cast of that from the Hyro Titan. I believe it got an additional cast of that in Loopy's Battle Balance mod. So a little bit of a buff for Mobile Suit Tall Geese. Nehekara Horsemen piling in through the gaps in the Skaven line getting in on top of the Rattling Guns, but there are Rat Ogres in support. And here comes that Jaff's Incantation of Cursed Blades, plus 16 bonus for Slarge, more AP and base weapon damage, and a Nero's Incantation of Protection. 40% physical resistance will protect them a lot against the armor-piercing halberds of those Guando infantry and the Rat Ogres. Physical resistance is exactly what you want and what you need against high AP. So timely cast of that should allow them to at least hold back the tide for a while longer yet but really nice overlapping fields of fire that on flayed fire coming in from the flank and just destroying those nakara horsemen i'm not even sure it's worth trying to disengage at this point they're suppressed anyway they're gonna get attacked in the rear by the rat ogres they'll just crumble out they might as well just stayed in and finished off the rat ogres at least i think and perhaps they were overlapped a little bit too much there. Maybe they should have spread out and gone through different gaps in the line. But there are still mobile tools on the Tomb King side like these chariots. And here comes the Tomb Scorpion. Yes, there is a new special ability at Tier 3 Rebel Souls for the Tomb Kings. It replaces the Ushabti Summon. And now it gives you some late game terror options. Tomb Scorpion is exactly what the Doctor ordered for the Tomb Kings here. This could be really big, especially if it gets on top of the Rattling Guns. Going after the Storm Vermin for now, but with the help of the Chariots, they should be able to push through and start silencing some of these guns. Katep continues to pound the ever-living daylights out of those Thagaraki in the center, and a big development that could turn the tides of fortune towards the undead. Mobile elements in the first blue circle, Ushabti and Infantry breaking through the Vermin at the second blue circle. They are well positioned for a pincer maneuver that would shatter both Skaven weapon teams. This would take a ton of pressure off the casket and allow Katap to continue his bombardments, not to mention keeping the Hyro Titan safer, who is now into the Rat Ogres, into the armor sundering Guando infantry. And this is a big test for it because it was already down about a third of its HP or more from that rattling gun fire. And now surrounded by Rat Ogres, surrounded by the Ashen Triads, Kryptonian laser eyes will help clear out some of this infantry, but can it survive? Its armor value is one of its most important things that makes it tanky, 
That's going to be cut in half by the Weeping Blades of Eshin. So now both factions' backlines are in big-time danger. Tomb Scorpion, Tomb Chariots, and Ushabti putting insane amounts of pressure on the Skaven backline, and they look like they'll be able to deal with the Rattling Guns, if not the Gunner Runners. Not sure they have enough speed to catch up to those and kill them quickly or easily, as we see more Triads and Rattlers running back to reinforce. Katep is in danger. He needs help from some Ushabti. He gives them a Jaff's Incantation of Cursed Blades. Not overcast, but it'll still be enough finish off the monstrous infantry of the Skaven quickly. But the Hyro Titan is in big time danger as Skrull begins beating on him. He also has the Liberal Bonicus which was just cast on DJ Katap. That's a big time nuke. Lots of damage going his way. He's down to 974 HP, but he is still online with his artillery and he is still making the Skaven pay for every inch of ground they cover. Up to 289 kills. Hyro Titan debilitated, minus four leadership. Gonna need some kind of infantry support. Looks like its leadership did just stabilize, but a rod of corruption to clear out some of the support. Tomb Kings are beginning to look very thin, even thinner than their scaly frames are typically allowing for. Gunner Runner's getting some good shots into the Ushabti, and Clan Rats swarming on top of the constructs. All the Rattling Guns were finished off, but it looks like they may have done their damage because... Tomb Kings are not looking too healthy at this point. They still have Katap, they still have the Hyro Titan, still have a handful of Constructs and big time bombardments dropping in, clearing out yet more of the Storm Vermin. Sandstorm going to prevent their assault up the hill. But Katap is not going to be around for too much longer. The Bounce Bar is heavily in favor of the Thagaraki and the Hyro Titan is simply not doing enough. It's not really doing much of anything. Surrounded by the Rat Ogres and Skrull it just can't seem to land attacks. Doesn't seem to attack fast enough, and it's going to be over for the Tomb Kings momentarily. Army losses will kick in, and ODM Loopy will take this battlefield and a brilliant performance on the Skaven side. They really played that close to perfection. The Rattling Guns were shattering the Hyro Titan and the Chariots at all times. The Nehakara Horseman Assault was shut down beautifully. They weren't really able to do much of anything. Perhaps it would have been better to go around and maybe take a little bit more time. But I was so scared of those Rattling Guns, dude. They were wrecking me. I think the Necro Serpents actually performed very admirably considering the crappy situation they were put into. There's no doubt in my mind that dropping the Hyro Titan here and going for a wider build with Carrion, more Nehakara Horsemen, more mobility, more tools to get into the Skaven rear and shut down their range play would have been extremely beneficial. And Hyro Titan in general against a faction like the Skaven, it can pay dividends in the right situation. But generally speaking, if they're playing it correctly and they have the right tools as they did here with the Eshin Triads, the Rat Ogre Rush, and with that tanky front line, it's, it's just going to be really difficult to get value back from it, man. Not even just because of the overwhelming shooting, which of course Skaven are well known for. If they have warp lightning cannons, it would be a similar issue the Hyro Titan would face. But it just isn't even that good in melee either. Like, it has an insane amount of weapon damage and really good stats, but it's so slow that it can never get on target. And even if it does get on target, you just drop Vermintides at its feet, and then the splash attacks don't do enough damage easily move Skrulk away from him, he's going to be fine, and it just doesn't carry you in the way that you would hope for an almost 2,000 gold unit. So, Odium Loopy played that great. I think the Rat Ogres and Eshin Triads in combination were a really good tool for getting into the rear and messing up the Necro Serpents, messing up that Hyro Titan, putting pressure on Katep. Katep did awesome, 350 kills. He was fantastic with both the Casket and with the Vortexes, but in the end, Skaven had a perfect strategy here, and they executed it about as well as you could poss possibly ask for. So, very well played. Hope you guys enjoyed, and there will be more from our series coming very soon.